How about a series that looks at gaming, where it came from, how it's changing, and where it's going? This is just a pilot episode, so let me know down below if you think it's a good idea. All successful gaming platforms begin with standard hardware, so setting aside software development, let's focus on that. Of course we'll cover the current console leaders, Nintendo, Microsoft, and Sony, but there are interesting newcomers using hardware in new ways, like Apple, Google, and Valve. Use the links below to watch a different episode, or just search for Gaming Wars on YouTube, but the best experience comes from clicking these pop-ups from a computer. Most of all, click subscribe with email notifications and follow on Twitter for updates. Let's get started. So how big are video games anyway? Let's get some perspective. In 2011, people spent 17 billion on music, while movie ticket sales were just over 10 billion. Want to guess how much money the gaming industry made in 2011? Mmm, 20 billion? Not even close. Uh, 40 billion. How about this? Let's combine music and movie ticket money, double it, and video games still made 20% more than that. What? No wonder I'm always broke. How did video games get so big? To understand how video games, or interactive entertainment, went from 0 to 65 billion in 30 years, let's wind the clock back and look at the first generation of consoles. In 1972, entrepreneur Richard Baer invented the first game console. He tried to license it to the tech giants of the time, but only Magnavox saw the potential. Magnavox presents Odyssey, the electronic game of the future. Odyssey easily attaches to any brand TV, black and white or color, to create a closed circuit electronic playground. At the same time, a couple of guys in Silicon Valley played with the Odyssey and it caught their attention. They founded a startup, called it Atari, and put together a TV, a laundry coin slot, and some circuits in a simple wooden cabinet running a game they called Pong. This cabinet brought video games mainstream and kicked off the golden age of arcades, a radical entertainment revolution where the player determined the outcome on the screen. Unlike music and movies where audiences can be passively entertained, the gaming experience requires players to not only participate, but empowers them to become an active part of the experience. Even though Pong practically invented the video game arcade, the Atari guys weren't done. They wanted to shrink the arcade experience into a box that could connect to any TV. And after three long years, they finally did it. Excited, they began hitting trade shows looking for distributors, but like the Magnavox Odyssey, no one was interested, except one of the biggest retailers at the time, Sears. So in 1975, Sears, like Magnavox, made a bet that kept the console alive, getting exclusive rights to Atari's first console. But when Richard Baer, inventor of the Odyssey, saw Pong, he was pissed. <laughs> He felt Atari ripped off his games. They just put it in a different box. And eventually, Magnavox sued Atari over patent infringement, the first big battle in gaming wars. Being a startup, Atari didn't have much money and chose to settle and give up rights to all products they released for one year. Oh no! So how did Atari fight back? Easy. They delayed the release of any new products for one year. Aye! <laughs> In the meantime, a bunch of mediocre clones popped up, and then, in 1977, for the first time, supply outstripped demand, and the budding video game market crashed, killing the clones, leaving mostly Magnavox and Atari in the lead. People were really just bored of Pong. How did Atari make a comeback? Meanwhile, Atari was getting ready for the second generation of consoles. While locked out of the market by the Magnavox settlement, they were secretly building a cheap and flexible console that could play more than just one Atari game. But there was a problem. At the time, Motorola processed processors were too expensive. Then the famous Moss 6502 8-bit CPU came out at a cheap price and blew the doors wide open for a bunch of products like the Apple II, the Commodore PET, and the famous Atari 2600. Unlike the Pong console, the 2600 was inspired by a different game console that unfortunately came out just before the video game crash of 77, a flexible console that worked with separate programmable cartridges. But now with the improved Moss 6502, the 2600 had better graphics and sound. Okay, Atari, let's see your best pitch. You're out, Rose! The Atari video computer system is 20 cartridges with 1,300 game variations you play on your own TV set. It shipped with Combat and later Pac-Man. The next year, Magnavox released its own processor-based console, the Odyssey 2. But the market was still weak from the crash. Even the Atari 2600 lost money at first, and in 1978, the founder, Nolan Bushnell, left the company for good. But this time, instead of retailers saving consoles, game developers kept the industry alive. In 1978, an innovative Japanese developer created an arcade game that was so successful it actually created a shortage of 100 yen coins in Japan, Space Invaders. This innovation single-handedly rescued the industry and highlighted the importance of good game development ushering in the golden age of arcades. In California, 
A few frustrated Atari developers left the company to form Activision, the first third-party game company. These pioneers pushed the hardware of the 2600 with better games. Well, that space game there looks like a thrill a minute. Why not try a real blast? Laser Blast by Activision, a new breed of game cartridge for your Atari video computer system. Battle endless attackers, fight their force fields, and dodge their radar tracking systems. And by 1979, two years after its initial release, the Atari became the best-selling holiday gift. The next year, Atari licensed the popular Space Invaders to help it sell over 2 million consoles. For the first time, it became clear that a successful console required good games and a healthy developer community. Discover a world beyond your wildest dreams. Discover Atari. Pioneers in coin video games like Centipede. Test you like never before. Discover the Atari that opened your eyes to the world's most popular home video game like Space Invaders. Missile Command. And Warlord. But the competition just didn't stop. In 1980, Mattel released the Intellivision, the first 16-bit console ultimately selling 3 million units. Hills presents Intellivision. Intelligent television by Mattel. More sophisticated than any video game that has come before. Providing hours of entertainment for the entire family. Intellivision, with one of the clearest game displays available today. Find this system, plus a complete line of sports and video game cassettes at Hills, where our game is low prices every day. And in 1982, the ColecoVision console packaged with the beautifully ported Donkey Kong game from a growing Japanese company sold 2 million units. You are the player, and the arcade is the arena. You focus your mind and propel yourself into a universe where you're the master of your destiny for as long as you can keep the trip going. This is the arcade experience. We're ColecoVision. We bring the arcade experience home with games like Donkey Kong with multiple screens, arcade controls, and arcade graphics that let you have the arcade experience at home because your vision is our vision. ColecoVision. Still, Atari remained king of the hill, with a total of 10 million units sold by 1982. The CPU in the 2600 was mediocre at best. It ran at 1.19 MHz, only had 128 bytes of RAM, and each game had to fit in 4 kilobytes of storage, making it one of the most difficult machines to write games for. But these constraints forced developers to come up with ingenious ways to produce a lot of action on the screen, resulting in a more engaging experience. Atari knew that it had to keep innovating. Right when the 2600 came out, Atari began work on the next console that was supposed to be released in 1980. But tempted by the success of Apple and Commodore during the PC revolution, Atari switched gears and made computers instead. Discover the Atari that brought you a home computer truly designed for the home. Sophisticated for advanced needs, yet simple enough for your child to use. Compose music. Play advanced games. Manage your finances, all at the touch of a button. The 400 and 800 in late 1979. But they just couldn't compete with Apple's higher margins. Bruised and disoriented, Atari released the 5200 in 1982. And while it had better graphics, Atari made a huge mistake. At first, it wasn't compatible with the popular 2600 games at the time. What? and game development was really weak. And just look at that controller. At the same time, players just couldn't get enough of video arcades. In 1982, the arcade industry just in North America generated $8 billion in quarters, for the first time surpassing pop music and Hollywood revenues combined. To compare, Home video game consoles only brought in 3.8 billion. Seeing the Space Invader arcade mania in Japan, Atari tried to break into the Japanese market with a slimmed down version of the 2600, but it was too late. A company had just released a new console called Famicom, and this company had a secret weapon. Something coming up the plumbing portal reaches in a bite. Giant turtles out the can and creepy crabs are right behind. Spider flies, cheaper giants, they're all coming out the pipes. Mario, where are you? It's Atari Mario Brothers with Mario from Donkey Kong, his brother Luigi, and lots of crazy creatures. And it's twice the fun when two play at once, because you need all the help you can get. Mario, where are you? Mario Brothers, new from Atari.
the most famous game designer in history. This man understood that all great games must start with a story, and together, they were about to revolutionize gaming in the third generation of consoles. So what do you all think? Stay tuned, because I hope to continue the series up to the current generation of consoles coming out, while highlighting some game developers that are pushing innovation in the mobile and social networking world today. To find the best deals for video games, please support the channel by clicking the Amazon links below and saving any good deals you find to your cart. Also, coming up in Game Wars 2013, I hope to go over the Nintendo Wii U platform before it's officially released. One of the things I love about YouTube is how your input helps guide the direction of this channel. Hit that like button if you'd like to see me finish the series. If you're a new viewer, please like, comment, share, and subscribe with email notifications to join my next appliance where we try to keep up with innovation everywhere and the companies behind it. You can also follow a Twitter account for news and good tech deals.